was a very personal book. It was a very, it's very close to me, very raw, very, in some ways, I, I wouldn't say autobiographical, but it's very, um, it's very, it's from a place in my soul, I think. Yeah, they feel very modern to me as well. And I, you know, it was really a thin line because I wanted, you know, they're ancient characters from an ancient time, but I wanted them to feel that, you know, these could be women anywhere today, you know, going through war, trying to protect their children. And I think it does, I think it has kind of a timeless quality to it. You know, when I went there, I felt as if the past was present. You know, it d didn't feel very removed. It felt like it had just happened. And I felt like I heard, you know, the voices of my grandmothers walking, walking through that fortress. Joyce Tennyson is the photographer who, who took the photograph that's in the, on the cover. And I found it when I was rewriting the book. I found she's a beautiful photographer, art photographer. And I, found, I had gotten a, a book of hers and I was leafing through it and I saw this photograph and I thought, this is the cover of my book. This is my character. And so I, I kind of kept it propped up while I was rewriting the book. And then when I sent in the manuscript, I sent it with the cover. It is beautiful. Again. I think in, in a way it's representative of all of them. For me, she's a particular character, but I don't want to say who because for someone else, maybe she's another character. So I feel like she's just really, you know, brings, I think, to life, you know, the sense of a very ancient, ancient mm -hmm. person, but also who feels very modern and very direct. I mean, her gaze is, is amazing, I think. There is so much noise upstairs. That doesn't matter. It's, it's almost okay. like they're dancing. You know, for me, uh, you know, when I'm writing a book, I identify with every character. I think it's the way they say that in your dreams, you're every character, including the dog and the cat. I mean, I feel that I'm every character in the book. A, a little piece of me is, is in every character. I feel like there's Irish step dancing upstairs <laughs> and moving furniture at the same time. So that's pretty difficult to do. It's funny because my son is always complaining about his upstairs neighbors, but now I see people really can make a lot of noise. You know, I think I, I made certain decisions. I knew that I wanted to have more than one voice. I wanted it to be um, a group of women. I knew that um, when I came home from Masada, I, I had read Josephus, who's the ancient historian who tells the story of Masada, and that's where I found out that there were survivors. I hadn't known that there were survivors of Masada. And um, he said that two women and uh, five children survived. So I told the story um, in the voices of four women, but as I was writing it, I didn't know which of the women would survive and which would not. The funny thing is, is that I knew nothing, and I think if I had known anything about either Jerusalem or the Roman Empire or that time period, I would have never attempted to write the book. But because I knew nothing, I just leapt in. And then I felt that I only had to know what these four women knew. And that kind of allowed me to write. And then I kept going back and doing research, you know, different layers of research as a, during the time that I was writing. You know, the funny thing for me is that I used to have a very definite workspace, especially when I had young children, because I just needed to have that workspace. And I needed to create the world. So I would paint my office a different color for each book. If a book took place, I wrote a book called Here on Earth, it took place in the fall, so I you know, painted my office orange and green. I put leaves um, in wax paper over all the windows. I kind of wanted to create the mood of the book. But with this book, I didn't, I didn't have an office, I didn't work in an office. I, I really didn't, the world was so intense for me and there was no way to really recreate it um, that it really didn't matter to me. And I don't work in an office anymore, I'm just portable. I, I, it doesn't matter where I work, really. As long as I don't have a window, I don't want to have a window when I'm working so that, or a beautiful view, um, because I want to go inside, you know, not outside. The biggest distraction for me is really, it's not a distraction, it's that I really, every time I start a book, I feel like I don't know how to write a book. I don't know who wrote these other books. I don't know how to begin a novel. And it's a process for me of relearning how you write a novel. The starting point for me can be anything. It can be a trip to Paris. It can be thinking about a town in Florida that's filled with divorced women. It could be um, looking through photographs from a flea market. It can be, you know, just an idea of why are people from the same family, why can children from the same family have such a different response to their parents and their environment. It, it can be many different things. Sometimes it starts with a character for me, sometimes with a place. I tend to take, I, 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 I make a lot of notes. As I'm, I feel like I'm building a world, so I make a lot of notes, I do research into, you know, various odd things, you know, plants, herbs, make lists of words that I want to use, um, descriptions, you know, just kind of random uh, sensory um, images, um, 
And then I, then I usually make an outline, and I'm pretty organized until I start writing, and the outline falls apart, and I have to just kind of give in to the characters and let them take over. You know, when I was starting out as a writer, I felt that I could never write a great book because as a woman, I could never experience war or write about war. That's how I felt when I was young. Now, I feel that in writing this book, I've, I have written about war, but I've written about it from a different point of view. And I didn't really understand that when I was first starting out. So I think for me, you know, the book is about really about peace and more than it is about war and about women who yearn for peace. And I think that, for me, that's why it feels timeless to me, because I think it happens over and over again, where in a world of war, women are trying to survive and to, and to have their children survive as well. You know, what I believe as a person and what I believe as a writer are very different. And I think um, my great teacher, my mentor, always said to me that the writer isn't the person that you meet, it's the person that you read. So I think there's a real division sometimes between who you are as a person and who you are as an artist. So I'm not a big believer in my personal life, but as, but as a, an artist, I think I believe. Well, the part that I feared um, was, the, was the, the last night at Masada, which is the, when 900 Jews committed mass suicide uh, to escape from the Romans and to escape from slavery. And that was, I dreaded having to write that because I didn't know how to write that so that it would honor the people who were there and also um, honor the reader mm -hmm. as well. Um, so that was scary for me. And in fact, I, you know, I did write that at the end, but I always knew what the last sentence my character was going to say. Um, so I knew where I was, I, I was going towards life rather than death with the story. Could you read that last sentence? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't. I really don't think I could because, you know, for me, I cry when I read this. It's very, it's very emotional for me, and um, I can read parts of the book, but there are certain parts of the book that I don't think I could read aloud, because still, when I read them myself, th you know, I cry, so that would be too embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I cried as I wrote that scene, but I knew that there was something after that scene. I knew there were, that there was hope after that scene. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.